My name is Paul Swears. I'm a professor in the Department of Management at the George Washington University. And in today's presentation, I'm going to give it to you in two parts. And the first part is entitled Entrepreneurship in the Cognitive Economy, Part 1. So here we go. The goals of this Part 1 presentation are, of course, to introduce you to the whole idea of a cognitive economy. After we've done that, we'll discuss the position of entrepreneurs in this new and emergent economy. And lastly, I will be showcasing the role of thinking skills as a tool of entrepreneurial success in that cognitive economy. We're going to begin with, that, with, this, with this question about big ideas. So where do entrepreneurs get their big ideas? And can they sometimes appear in one word? So with that in mind, I've got a short video that I'd like you to take a look at. And it's a clip from a rather famous movie uh, starring, uh, now I'm blocking on his name. Okay, you'll, you'll recognize him yeah, in a second. Okay. okay. Go ahead and introduce your movie again. Okay. It's a, uh, what's his name? Oh, it's a famous movie starring Dustin Hoffman. The name of the movie is The Graduate. The movie appeared in 1967, and there's a clip from there that left a lasting impression on me, and we'll see if it does the same for you. So here we go. And let's play that movie. Can you do it? Yeah, just come out of the movie at whatever point. It's, it's not playing, though. Oh! That's pro yeah, it's pro it probably exists on your laptop. We'll just have to get the file from you. Okay. The PowerPoint file from you. All right. Okay. Are you gonna, are you, were, it, were you gonna talk through it? No, I was okay. just, it's only about a minute and a half. Okay, so just act like it's... it's okay, just, all right. So we'll give it one more second just for a tape. Okay. Oh, there it goes. But you can't, I don't know if they're picking up the sound. Well, you'll just have to put it in, right? Okay. Yeah. So what was the big word in that clip? The word, of course, was plastic. All right? Now, watching that clip, I have to tell you, it took me back in time a bit. In a time when one of the most famous slogans of, of the contemporary world was better living through chemistry. Maybe you've heard it. From 1935 to 1982, it was a slogan of the DuPont Chemical Company. And plastics was a big part of that chemistry. Now, another thing that this revolution created was, of course, the Green Revolution. So at the time, what was going on was chemistry in that economy was creating a revolution. The revolution was occurring on two fronts in terms of plastics and pesticides. And the point I'm trying to make is that when you're in the midst of a revolution, you're, you're in the midst of change. And change means opportunity. So entrepreneurship means opportunity. Okay? In fact, if you look back historically, you'll see that we have gone through various economic revolutions. Okay? These revolutions are part of that capitalist notion of creative destruction. Creative destruction requires innovation and creativity to respond to the changes that are occurring in the macroeconomy. Those innovations in creativity, of course, are the representation of entrepreneurial opportunity. Okay? Now just think about the various economies that have, that have, that have accompanied these re revolutions. First, of course, is the industrial economy. Then, of course, we talk about the service economy. Oh, got to talk about the post-industrial economy, the knowledge economy, the share economy, and of course, I'm sure you've heard about this in other segments of the course, the gig economy. All right. So I'm introducing to you today this idea of the cognitive economy. Right. And what I'm saying is that we're in the midst of a cognitive revolution. And if you don't believe me, well, you could attend one of the many conferences that talk about the cognitive revolution. The one presented on this slide will occur in, in 2018 at the, the University of, uh, of uh, California in San Diego. Okay? But as you see on the slide, these revolutions, as we suggested earlier, result in a cognitive economy. And what you have in that image there is a mind map 
of the cognitive economy. So this is someone thinking about what is the cognitive economy and every one of those images and connections on that mind map, at least from an entrepreneurial perspective, represent a potential opportunity. That causes, of, of course, to ask, well, what is different about the cognitive economy? Okay, so let's take a moment to try to answer that. One of the things that, that I think is very, very different about the uh, cognitive economy is the end of the job. This image that you see here actually appeared in Fortune magazine in 1994. I was early in my career and I was dealing with how changes in the economy are affecting jobs. Now at the time, I was very, very interested in the consequences of job loss. I had written a master's thesis on plant closings and I was part of that community that saw these changes occurring in the industrial economy as producing negative outcomes. If you check the historical record, you'll also see however, that others were thinking differently and they were seeing the opportunity. So at that time, I was not thinking like an entrepreneur. I was, cons I was filled with the anxiety that came along with change, okay? But what does happen when you try to imagine a world without jobs? Okay? I think one of the first things you begin to see is people having to create their own jobs. And you begin to see the growing need for that entrepreneurial mindset. Now some of these people will end up in traditional jobs, others will end up in marginal entrepreneurial jobs, you know, they'll maybe open a dry cleaners establishment or a, a coffee shop or something, a franchise. So they don't really have to engage very far in this idea of entrepreneurial thinking before they can shut it down and, and convert them themselves into a, to a, a, a different form of worker, one without a conventional job. But imagine now if a greater and greater proportion of the economy is requiring these, these creative thinking skills, these ability to create opportunity out of change, okay? So we have the end of jobs as I suggested. You can look at it from this kind of nightmare perspective or you can look at it from the perspective of opportunity. And of course, what I'm trying to introduce to you is that we're in the midst of this cognitive economy and there are great opportunities ahead if you become aware that this change is occurring. Okay? The cognitive economy, from an entrepreneurial point of view, represents opportunity. Okay? Of course, let's circle back for a moment. What about Ben? Okay? As you saw in the video clip, Mr. McGuire was suggesting to Ben that he think about plastics. Now, I'll come back to that thinking comp component, but I'll just ask you the question. What had happened if, if Ben had taken the advice? What if Ben had become an entrepreneur in plastics? Now, in the movie, we don't see that. It was all about, you know, young man's love, a 21-year-old getting out of college, trying to figure out his career. Mr. McGuire takes him aside, suggests plastics. But what if he had? Now, that became more of interest to me as, as I became a father and two sons and, and, and thinking about, you know, what, what advice do I give to, to, to my children, okay? If Ben had taken the advice, he would now be part of a $450 billion industry, employing almost a, a million people. Now, if it employs a million people, how many of those people are entrepreneurs in that industry? I would suggest a high number who have been very successful, okay? That plastics industry, that chemical industry that I was talking about earlier was the result of science, okay? For the last roughly 50 years, there's a new discipline appeared that's called cognitive science. This science is only now introducing this new cognitive economy. So I'm inviting you to get in at the early stages. The most uh, pr prominent product, recent product of this cognitive economy thinking, of course, is artificial intelligence. All right? So this artificial intelligence, if you have your antennae up, you can see all the opportunities that are, and anxieties that are being created by this innovative byproduct of cognitive science. Okay. But what I'm in, 
inviting you to do is to use this idea of cognition and cognitive science, just like in the film with Ben. I want you to start thinking about the cognitive economy. Why? Because thinking precedes action. Right? As we'll see in, the, in our later sli slide set, if you want to develop a business, okay, you have to have a sense of where you're going. In order to develop that sense of where you're going, you need to take the time to set back and actually w do the work of thinking about the cognitive economy and your potential place within it. Okay? In the old economy, I, I, you know, if you look at these pictures carefully, I chose them purposely. The two slides on, on, on the, under the old economy are actually representations of entrepreneurship in the textile industry. I'm thinking about, you know, all the innovation that goes on in, in everything from kind of Nike to Under Armour. I mean, it's a very innovative industry, the fashion industry. But you'll notice that in both of the images, we have one image where children in the 1890s are struggling for, in the factory of a textile mill. And, and in the other, we have actually the North Koreans uh, 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 doing sewing in another textile, the modern textile mill. My point being is that there is a portion of the economy that is dominated by business models that have been in existence for decades. Okay? If you have a revolution, what does work like look like in that economy? How do you build the relationships and build a successful organization in that economy? So what I'm suggesting to you is that entrepreneurship and the skills required to be a successful entrepreneur are different in the new economy, in the new cognitive economy. Okay? I'm also suggesting to you that entrepreneurs are what we can legitimately call cognitive workers. Cognitive workers, in my definition, are people whose value add, whose major contribution, whose ability to succeed in the future is dependent upon their thinking skill development. That is, is that they're actually better users of the cognitive skills made available to them by their mind. Okay? Cognitive science, as I suggested earlier, tells us that thinking precedes behavior especially if it's intentional thinking, all right? There is instinctual thinking. We don't think before we e express our instinctual behavior, all right? But if we're doing anything else, we're thinking about it in advance. Now, if you, if you, if you, if you consider that as a, as a statement, that thinking is a skill, I'll also suggest to you that most of the education that you've had to date hasn't prepared you to be a skilled thinker. It's actually prepared you to be a non-thinker, that is, in the conventional workplace, in those textile mills I pointed out a little, little earlier, you're there to be a hired hand. You're not there to do any thinking. And even if you go into the next stage of the economy, where you are what might be called a knowledge worker, your thinking is limited to remembering what you learned. You're a knowledge worker, so you're drawing upon your, your knowledge. But that knowledge thinking doesn't require innovation and creativity. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you need that innovation and creativity and some other skills I'll identify a little bit later that are legitimately identified as, and specifically, as thinking skills. Okay? So with that, I'm going to end this first presentation by identifying some various takeaways that I'll ask you to, like in the film, think about. Okay? Think about the fact that we're in the early stages of a new cognitive economy. Challenge me on that. I think I'm right, and I think once you begin looking, you'll begin seeing evidence of that. Okay? I also will make the assertion that entrepreneurs are cognitive workers. That as cognitive workers, they depend upon superior thinking skills to differentiate, them, to differentiate themselves from other entrepreneurs who they're in competition with. This cognitive work requires higher quality thinking skills. Skills that you personally have to develop on your own, or at least seek them out, because the conventional educational models do not provide them. And lastly, two of these important thinking skills are your ability to think creativity, cre creatively, and then think innovatively to turn and create business models that can be implemented into ongoing businesses. 
So with that, I'll wrap up part one of our presentation and invite you to stick around for part two.